Hi everybody, my name is Matt Hernandez. I'm a photographer from Kentucky and today I'm going to go over a short tutorial on how I use blending modes to make shadows look realistic in Photoshop. Uh, before we get started, if you want to learn more about me or see any of my work, you can go to my website, MattHernandezPhotography.com. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, the topic of this video is anybody that, that follows me at all or has seen my work knows that I like to do a lot of composites. And on my website, a lot of the projects that I have are personal projects, but I am a full-time photographer also, and I do a lot of sports pictures. So um, I typically try to get most of my team shots right in camera, and that reduces significantly can reduce your editing time. Personal projects, I don't really care. I, I actually kind of enjoy the creative process of compositing and painting in shadows and that kind of thing, but when you're being paid by people and it's your full-time job, then you need to make your workflow as consistent um, and streamlined as possible. So normally I would do team shots outside. Um, I have a 640 watt second strobe. I have a few of them that I use. Uh, typically for a picture like this, I've got two edge lights with reflectors. I've also got a main light that um, a seven foot Westcott parabolic umbrella. And that works great for overpowering the sun to get your sports images to look as dramatic as possible in camera, then like I said, that reduces the editing time. However, sometimes things happen and you don't have ideal conditions. Like for instance, this photo was taken in an indoor practice facility because it was raining outside. So I knew right off the bat I was gonna have to composite it because I can't give them a picture like this. So, you know, you could go a couple routes, you could cut these girls out, make the background go black, maybe put clouds behind them, use the, the floor, the turf that they're on. Problem with that is you can see, um, the seams here, this isn't really the nicest turf in the world. It's not glued down, so it's coming up in spots and doesn't really look that great. So I wanted to put them on a field. And back um, when I was a little bit less experienced a couple years ago, maybe I would probably go in and try to mimic these shadows and paint them in. That can be very time consuming. And honestly, for stuff like this, it's this is a middle school girls soccer team. It's really not gonna be time effective to do that. So. You want, I needed to figure out a way to use these actual real shadows in the finished image and that, and that would significantly reduce your time editing. So here's the background that I decided I want to use, wanted to use. This is a picture of, of, a, of a football field, um, which a lot of times in high school and soccer is also used for soccer. So this is obviously edited. Um, I already had this in my library. I figured it would work perfect for this picture. So, um, I dragged them in. I, I used the pen tool to cut them out and then I dragged them in. Now this is what it looks like without any shadows painted in. And obviously that's not going to work because it doesn't look real at all. There's no shadows. That's not realistic. So rather than painting them in, I figured out a way to use blending modes to use the actual shadows from the photo. So, okay, so here's my, here's my image not cut out. There's, I've got one, I've got it cut out on top and then I created another folder over here in my layers called shadow. And I basically just duplicated that layer and deleted the mask. So this is the original image. So we gotta figure out a way to use these actual real shadows. So the way that we're gonna do that is a combination of blending modes and then what's called the blend if slider in Photoshop, which is really a game changer when it comes to compositing to help blend things together. And I've recently started using it a lot and it, I mean, it really, it really works well. So I'm going to show you what I used in this image to get the, the finished look. So, so we've got our cutout here and then below it, we've got a shadow group. Um, basically I just duplicated that layer of the girls, deleted the mask and then created a group called shadow. So to start out, most people would probably just try the blending modes and let's do that. Let's see what that looks like. Um, let's try multiply that makes things darker start out okay so that that you can kind of start to see the field underneath them to show through that other turf um, I can right away see that I'm probably gonna have to take all the color out of this because since we have a photo of a field already and I've got I've done some colorization here and some color toning and it's it's kind of given like a, a golden look to it so it's taken some of the color out making it desaturated but there's still some in there when you when you use blending modes with with pictures, a lot of times, if, if the color is still in the, the, the layer, then it can create it, too much saturation. We don't want that. So right away, I can see I'm probably gonna have to desaturate this. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Um, a couple of different ways you could do it, but I'm just gonna press Shift-Command-U and take the color out. So 
Okay. Obviously, we're going to need to get rid of that background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my layers, and I'm going to I'm going to click on this group. I'm going to hit the mask button, and then I'm going to hit my G tool for my gradient, and I'm going to take out that background just like that. Okay. So I can see without that background distracting me what my blending modes are going to do here. So first one I try is multiply. It looks okay. Um, there's some problems here. It looks a little bit muddy in areas, but it's kind of doing what I want it to. Let's let's go to another one that I use a lot called overlay. And overlay looks really good too. Let's zoom in. Still some problems. Um, that the grass where the shadows are going over it and the light parts doesn't really look great. It's not dark enough. The shadows um, under people are always going to be darkest right where their their body meets the ground. So like right here, if I turn this blending mode off, you can see that's really dark underneath her foot. When I go to overlay, it's not dark. Now if some areas work like that's an example of an area that does not work. So let's try, let's try something here. I'm going to show you how to use what's called the blend if sliders. So I'm going to double click on this layer to bring up the blending options. And since I like what this is doing in some areas, we're going to see what, how this will help. Um, okay. So when you click on, double click on your layer, the layer style dialog box comes up. Down here at the bottom is what's called blend if. Now I'm going to set this to gray. And basically what this does is, the, 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 the part that we want to pay attention to is the underlying layer. And this is kind of confusing, but basically the, the short version of the way it works is when you drag these sliders to the left, it's going to blend the layer. When you drag it towards the dark side, this little white icon here, it's going to, it's going to blend the underlying layer where it's darker. Okay, so that's probably what we want but it doesn't look great yet. So what you can do is you can, and then the, uh, the opposite is true for the other side. If you drag the dark side to the right, it's gonna blend it where it's lighter. That's not what we want in this instance. Because the, the this looks good in the dark areas, but it doesn't in the light areas. So you can hold the Alter Option button on a Mac, and then I'll split this little carrot in half. And I'm gonna drag that to the left. And like I said, what this is gonna do is it's gonna blend this where it's darker right there okay so let's that's before that's after so what it's doing is it's allowing that layer the layer underneath to show through and then not be affected by that blending mode where everything is a little bit lighter it's blending it if it's darker so that's before and that's after so that's really starting to work a lot i'm going to go ahead and click ok now there's still problems here underneath some of these feet where it's not dark enough. So that's already looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, to use a combination here. I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J. And I'm going to set this to, instead of overlay, actually I'm going to move it below and we're going to set it to multiply. Okay, now that's starting to give me more of what I want. I think we need to tweak this a little bit. So you can double click on it again on those two little boxes in the layers palette over here, those two little boxes over each other. You can double click on that and it'll bring up your dialog box again. You can edit it. Um, I copied that layer so it's, it copied the blending mode also. So, um, okay, so let's go in here and switch this. Let's let's move it, let's start over. Okay, see that's still, that's way too dark. We need some of that detail to show through. So let's hold Alt, Alt or Option. I am on a Mac, by the way. Split that carrot and drag it to the left here. Go all the way over here. I have done this before I started the video, so I know what numbers I need to go to. But you can play around with these and drag them until you find something that works. Okay, there we go. I'm pressing my space bar to move around with this dialog box up. Um, okay, so there's before and there's after. Before, after. It's taking a little bit of that density out, showing a little bit of the underlying layer. We're blending if it's darker also. Okay. Okay, all right, so that is looking pretty good. Now, just, just so that you can see, I'm gonna show you what this would look like without using the blend if slider. Let's reset this. Okay, that works somewhat. Um, I think that that might be acceptable to some people. Me, personally, I, I, don't, I don't 
think that's good enough. I want it to look as real as possible. So you want some of that detail. Realistically, you look at this, you know that you would see some of that detail in that grass. So let's go back. Let's go back to before and see what it looked like. There's with our blend if slider. There's without our blend if slider. Huge difference there. You see a lot of that grass. You see a lot of that detail. Um, I've messed up my layers here. Let me go back. So you want the, the bottom one to be in multiply mode. The top one to be in overlay. And set this back how I had it. There you go, okay. Okay, now, that multiply layer, when you turn that off, you see the overlay layer, it's still not dark enough. That's why we added the multiply layer underneath it was to darken some of those areas up, especially underneath their feet where it needs to be darker because multiply the multiply blending mode makes things darker. So there's with just overlay, looks okay, but when you add the multiply in there also, it really adds more to it. And then multiply by itself is overall too dark. Then you bring an overlay, that's gonna add more contrast. So. Um, we do have a layer mask over here on the right in our layers palette on this um, on this group called Shadow. This area is too dark, so what I would probably do is come in here, select a black brush with a soft edge, and set my flow to 10% and come in here and paint this away. So that area that we don't need, so that blends a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so there's without the shadow, there's with it. I mean, that really... That looks pretty good. I, I don't know that there's a lot of people that would look at this image and think, oh, that's, you might, they might think it's a composite just because it's so dramatic, but at the same time, they're gonna look at that and think, man, that literally looks like they're standing on that field. So that, like I said, can be a huge time saver when compositing, especially with photos like this that you do get paid for, that you need to have a, a decently quick turnaround time. Rather than painting in those shadows, um, that sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't, but it can take a lot longer. Using the blend if slider is just, it's, a, it's huge when compositing. It can really help out. So um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, my name is Matt Hernandez, and you can check me out on my website, matthernandezphotography.com. I've got all of my social media links on there. And um, there's my website right there. So um, thanks, and we'll see you again next time.